Hello and welcome to this practical demonstration on some encryption and cryptography. So I've got a Windows machine open here um, and I'd like to just bring your attention to this cool portal called the Cryptool portal which is basically an open source um, collaboration from one of the universities in Germany which actually helps you understand cryptography and they've built a whole bunch of tools as you can see at the bottom they've got Cryptool Online, they've got JCryptool which runs on Java so it can run on multiple platforms Cryptool 1 and Cryptool 2 so this is a great resource for learning about different kinds of, of cryptography so I just want to quickly show you Cryptool 2 so as you can see this is what it looks like if you install it and you can pretty much use the wizard and watch videos and it helps with as you can see there's templates for AES and Caesar cipher and a whole bunch of other really really interesting things um, it's quite an involved tool and it will take quite a lot of time to demo it so I'm not going to do that I'll leave that up to you to do but what I do want to show you is Crypto 1 which is the older version and this is what it looks like when you open it so it gives you a, a sample text um, file that you can then use so as an example let's just say we want to encrypt it you click on encrypt we're going to do symmetric classic encryption so let's do a Caesar cipher from history so the Caesar cipher basically was a substitution cipher and what it does was you pretty much just change the offset so if, as an example let's use number value because it makes it easier if I move it to 5 you will see at the bottom here a it becomes F, B becomes G, C becomes H and so on and if I encrypt it this is what the file looks like so obviously anyone who doesn't have the cipher or doesn't exactly know what's going on will see this and say well I don't actually know what's happening here and I'll need to decrypt it and you literally just decrypt it by using the exact same thing um, let's go Caesar and our offset was 5 and let's say decrypt and there we go but this tool's also got quite a bit nice um, analysis function. So let's do that again. Just want to show you. Symmetric Caesar. And let's offset that by 7 this time. And encrypt that. And let's do analysis. So I'm going to say analyze. I'm going to do symmetric encryption classic cipher text Caesar. And it goes about and does a little bit of analysis. And this is, I found the derived Caesar key to be G and you say decrypt and there you go very easy for the Caesar cipher but not so easy for some of the others so let's take a modern encryption standard let's take um, their CVC as an example there's our key length so we're going to keep it at 0000 so this tool uses hexadecimal values generally so um, doesn't use plain text so let's leave it at 000 and encrypt it okay so this is what it would look like using their CBC but if I do an analysis on this and modern and there's CBC it says key length is that and I can say start as you can see it's going to take a whole bunch of thousands of years to do so can't really be used for brute force cracking cryptography unless you have a massive computer with a lot of computing resources this little VM's only got 4 gigs of RAM and 4 cores but obviously a supercomputer would do it in a little bit shorter time but as you can see the stronger the cipher the more secure the thing is anyway let's just click cancel and as you can see it says well I'm guessing that 000 could be the one and I can say okay well let's accept that selection and it will decrypt it for you that's pretty much how it works this is also a very uh, cool tool for um, doing PKI and anything so it's a really nice tool to learn cryptography and I highly recommend you take a look at it let's look at some tools on Kali Linux next okay so here we have Kali Linux open and let's just see what I've put into the cryptography file okay so the first thing I want to show you is doing hashing and how we can change integrity so you go to this um, there's many many hashing calculators on the internet just Google for one and this is one that I found like literally a few minutes ago so let's just copy that and go into uh, Firefox and as you can see I've already been there and what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to show you how hashing works so 
on my desktop I have a file called hashme.txt and as you can see it's got a whole bunch of characters in it let's delete that and say please hash me with all capitals at the beginning camel case and I'll say let's just save that and close that let's just close that on as well for posterity cache me text again please hash me there we go so what I do then is I literally just go to the site my browse and I can say okay there's hash me text let's open it up and say hashed great so as you can see it does it very very quickly because it's a small text file as you can see that this site specifically has a maximum upload size of 5 meg and let's just take md5 as an example so there's my md5 hash 9cd1855 I'm going to copy that because I want to keep a record of it uh, open another document just paste it in there and now I'm going to actually open hashme.txt again and I'm actually just going to do one thing I'm actually going to put a space after it and say save let's see if it actually makes a difference yes it does and I'm going to hash that file again as you can see I've made a change which is not visible to the eye but if I do a hash test on this in other words has this file changed integrity checking that's what hashing checks and I do hash me again and open it and hash it and if I take my md5 hash and let's just copy that and let's go see compare it to our old one as you can see the hash is totally different even though all I did was add a space at the end of the file before I saved it and that's how you use hashing to test integrity as you can see um, MD5 is quite a short hash but as you can look at the SHAs they become very 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 long hashes so they become very very difficult to crack or reverse engineer so that you can change the integrity of the file in transit and that's hashing in a nutshell let's take a look at some symmetric encryption now all right <clears throat> so let's go back to there open that up and let's open up our cryptography file and the tool best tool on Kali Linux to actually look at and look at different kinds of encryption and hashing and all that sort of stuff is OpenSSL and OpenSSL has got a lot of documentation on the internet and you literally just google it but I'm just going to paste it in here um, <clears throat> it's wiki.openssl.org let's just wait for that to load and as you can see it's got a whole bunch of content and this is pretty much what it does so as you can see it has every single cipher that you can possibly think of it doesn't have all of them but it's got all the ones that you'll encounter out in the field um, it's got a list of tools and rules that you can use you can use it for hashing you can use it for encryption etc etc so let's get started and look at a hashing example so uh, let's open up our um, terminal and go back to cryptography and let's just look at this over here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open SSL and I'm going to use the digest md5 hash me txt to, to derive the md5 hash of that file in theory it should be exactly the same as the one that we um, derived from the online tool so let's just do that come on my desktop so let's make sure we can see hashme.txt yes we can let's just paste that in and there's my hash so if I copy that and go back to this file which has my examples in and paste that it's exactly the same so we know that the hashing functionality on this command line tool works just fine great now let's do some encryption so what I want to do now is go back to my notes and what I'm going to do is show you the cipher commands so let's just do open SSL space list dash cipher dash commands let's copy that let's go back to our terminal 
and paste it in and let's see what it gives us. As you can see it gives us a whole bunch of the different ciphers that you can encrypt. So let's encrypt a file. So on my desktop, let's just do an ls minus l this time. I have a um, file called encrypted.txt and if I cat that file, and let's see what's inside it, encrypted.txt, it says in plain text please encrypt me. Okay, so the encryption command line tools for OpenSSL look complicated but they're not really so the command is OpenSSL ENC for encryption not DGST for hashing the cipher you want to use in this case I'm going to be using AES256 in is the file that you that is going to be inputted into the algorithm and out is the encrypted file that will come out as a dat file you can set it to anything, but it's going to be all encrypted gibberish, so .dat works very well in this instance. So let's copy that and see what happens. So we copy that, go back to our uh, terminal window, let's just clear the screen so we can see nicely, paste that in, okay, it will ask me for a password, I'm just going to put password in, it will ask me to verify it. So now if I do an ls minus l, you'll see there's an encrypted.dat over there. So let's cat encrypted.dat. And as you can see, it is salted and there's a whole bunch of gibberish, so it's totally encrypted. Now if I want to decrypt that file, I literally just do the same command in the reverse, um, but I need to add a minus d to the actual command line. So let's take a look at it. So as you can see it's open SSL ENC and so that's exactly the same. Minus D for decrypt. Your in file this time will be encrypted.dat and your out file is encrypted.txt. I'm actually going to change it to encrypted2.txt to show you that it is a different file. And let's just copy that and put that into our terminal window. Let's clear the screen so we can get it some real estate, paste that in, it'll ask me for the password, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, and it is done. Let's do an ls minus L. As you can see, there's encrypted2.txt, so if I cat encrypted2.txt, I get please encrypt me. So this is a really nice tool. Um, you can use it for yourself if there's documentation or files or folders, whatever it is, that you want encrypted on your local drive, this is a great way of encrypting it. It has AES 256 bit encryption, which is the standard out there and very, very difficult to crack. And use OpenSSL, use Cryptool.org and start understanding the different forms of cryptography and the different um, uses of hashing and the different uses of symmetric and asymmetric. There are lots of tools out on the internet and I hope that this short lab has shown you some really nice uh, examples of the crypt tool tool and some cipher texting as well as how to uh, derive hashes from files as well as how to encrypt files using OpenSSL. Thank you very very much for watching.